we were doing pretty good there for a while, getting movies from uh, the 21st century, but I think we're kind of going back in time again a little bit this week, right? Back in time. How does that song go from the Back to the Future? <laughs> Gotta go back in time. Bah, 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 bah. We all miss the news, Meg. But Huey Lewis needs time to create. These almost look like some men in black sunglasses. Mm-hmm. Right? Like rocking the uh, Will Smith shades here. It's, it's funny you should say that because the movie we're going to be doing today for Will and Mike explain the movie verse is, of course... Men in Black. Men in Black. The 1997... 1997? 1997 movie that, that uh, really kind of kick-started Will Smith's movie career and made him a genuine bona fide star got him out of the tv background and into the uh movie background so it made this prince maybe not as fresh but he definitely was at the time as far as the big screen is concerned <laughs> his style is yeah. still fresh to we're, this day <laughs> we've actually had a bit of a bumpy road getting started so we're just gonna kick this off by staring at the columbia pictures sign don't stare at it too long you might go blind <laughs> or you might lose your memory like the men in black want you to so we're going to start this in three, two, one, start. And here is the Columbia Pictures lady who kind of reminds me of the Statue of Liberty. I wonder who she was supposed to be modeled after. Like, uh, what's the story behind this lady? What is her background? We're going to have to do some research and say that one for another time. But... Follow us as we learn about Columbia, the lady <laughs> with the sash. Joining us right now at this moment are ladies, Mrs. William McCulley, Mallory. Hi. She has her mouth full of food, or else she'd probably say more. Yeah. And for the first time ever, my girlfriend, Alicia Okison. Say hi, Alicia. Hi. That's probably all we're going to get out of her tonight. <laughs> she swore that she would not say anything. She's on the podcast pod couch. Yeah, the pod couch. <laughs> Driving, doing some pod racing. <laughs> pod racing on the pod couch, doing the podcast. <laughs> Just a couple peas in a pod. Peas in a pod. Podcast. And I'm here on the pod Peas on the couch. podcast. But, uh, Don't yeah. pee on our podcast, though, please. <laughs> So as we start Men in Black with its uh, very Tim Burton-esque, uh, what do you call that, calligraphy or type type font? font? Yeah, definitely like font? type of font. <laughs> then uh, we, we come right in with a Danny Elfman score, which is almost always a staple of kind of a Tim Burton movie. But Tim Burton didn't direct this movie. Barry Sonnenfeld did. Yeah, but you wouldn't think so by the way that it's portrayed in this beginning. You would definitely think that it was some uh, uh, Tim Burton film through and through, the darkness of it, something. It almost looks like it. It's kind of his sense of humor, his kind of special effects and everything like that. And I swear for the longest time I thought this was a Tim Burton movie. But uh, the credits here are proving me wrong. Yeah, uh, after like the first couple times that I watched it, I kind of understood when this came on exactly what the show was. But when I first watched it the first couple times, it would come on like TBS or whatnot. And I'd be like, what is this? <laughs> is this a Tim Burton movie? Is this Batman? That's kind of funny cause <laughs> that you just saw it on cable when you, you know, the first time that you saw it. I remember being, I was probably about 16 when this came out. Mm-hmm. Maybe I was even 15 because I'm pretty sure I couldn't drive at the time quite yet. Yeah. But um, I, I went with a couple of friends to go see it in the movie theater and I remember we were all pretty presently presently surprised. Presently, presently surprised even. Presently surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually, promise I wasn't trying to talk racist. I, the first time I actually saw this was on VHS. Uh, <laughs> me and my father, uh, this was back before he was like, oh, DVD players, those are no good. I'm just going <laughs> to stick to my VHSs. Why are we ever going to do better? better than the old VHS? Well, we go to the local Hollywood video, which is kind of like a blockbuster, but a little bit smaller. And extinct, so I guess they have some similarities. What's Blockbuster? <laughs> blockbuster? <laughs> is that like the Tony Stark suit that goes after the Hulk? <laughs> uh, we actually went and rented this, and he's like, oh, it's an alien movie with that guy from that TV show. And me and my dad are always hip on movies. It's all we used to do is watch movies. we get four or five on a weekend, grab a couple Papa Murphy's pizzas, pop the uh, pizzas in the oven, and uh, you twisted your tongue with that tongue twister. <laughs> that wasn't quite the tongue twister. That's what's like that tongue, tongue twister. Ta, 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 ta. And uh, I just remember sitting there watching this, and I'm like, okay, Tommy Lee Jones, this is cool. It's got a little funny to it. And then Will Smith hits, and I'm just like, oh. Uh. Where do you know Tommy Lee Jones from? Because I'm pretty sure the only movie I saw him before this was The Fugitive. Mm. Um, I didn't did I kill remember my wife. From? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> that was his big. I, I think Tommy Lee Jones came out real big with that movie, mm-hmm. and then this was maybe his next big one that really you know put him on the map forever and ever. But the thing is, I as I always like to say, it's like Tommy Lee Jones as you've seen him time and time again. <laughs> basically, only ever plays one character. But 
you know, I might be being a little judgmental about that. <laughs> I'm sure he has all kinds of nuances. Right. Like there's one where the he looks he... like a scruffy dog. There's one where he looks like a sad dog. It depends on how many wrinkles he has. <laughs> you know, how, how sad or grumpy he's playing. But, uh, I mean, probably his greatest role ever is as uh, Harvey Dent Two-Face on Batman Forever, which came out just the next year after this. Mm -hmm. It's a very nuanced role, very subtle expressions. And mm -hmm. No, I'm just kidding. I hate that movie. But anyway, here, <laughs> right. uh, here's the Men in Black, the titular Men in Black, showing up for the first time. Wow, he doesn't have nearly as many wrinkles as I remember him having. Right? <laughs> and his uh, partner there, Agent Stanley. Wow, Will uh, Smith <laughs> really different in this movie. <laughs> he must have found the fountain of youth and ethnicity change. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the real drawback to the Fountain of Youth. It changes you into some completely other race. Yeah. It's like you'll remember everything, but you're not going to look the same after this, <laughs> chap. <laughs> um, he, uh, but, yeah, I, I, I think it's... Uh, it, if you've been watching the previews for this movie and the trailers, like, right before it came out, and you see, you know, Tommy Lee Jones, of course, shows up, and you're like, oh, here they come. But then it's this other, you know, older fellow with the mustache who d definitely does look like one of... You know, a, a twin brother is Stan, <laughs> like Stan Lee and, and Wilford Brimley mixed together and had a child. Yeah, um, they. Uh, I love the fact that he's speaking Spanish to the guy, and the guy obviously doesn't speak Spanish. I know no matter how Spanish, much he insults, people him. are just like, "Yep, he's not after well, us." And it's, it's great how he just tells those people, "Oh, you can go." And the border patrol are like, "What the crap?" Because I mean, of course, like. He sees the bigger picture. He knows the the grand scheme of everything. You know, he doesn't care about <laughs> borders of illegal aliens crossing like, in and stuff like that. He's enjoy got all America. Kinds more stuff to worry about, yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, coming up here too, um, as uh, the audience scratches their head and wonders why Will Smith has been recast as a small old guy, with a <laughs> um, it, we're we're about to see actually one of the first uses of uh, the full CGI character. Because mm -hmm. up till now, we, we'd had a little bit of that, you know, obviously Jurassic Park had a giant T-Rex and stuff yeah. like that. But, you know, I mean, they, they kind of worked on it here and there. Uh, some of the Alien movie franchise had had uh, kind of limited success with it. But right here is, is probably one of the first times you actually had a viable, you know, talking humanoid character, even right. though he's definitely not human, but... You know, and, and of course, some of these are spliced in with uh, practical effects too. A guy yeah, like maybe like the Henson Muppet Shop, or you know, yeah. some of those VFX uh, places. Exactly, they're kind of like the old Ninja Turtle movies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we gotta do a podcast on those sometime. The little Excuse rubber suit. Just broke right in the microphone. <laughs> but yeah, and and I, I mean, right right off the bat, right here with this first scene, it sets up just the the wildness and craziness of this, and and one of the fun things that makes this movie great. Uh, kind of like The Incredibles and a bunch of other movies, is it takes all this amazing, fantastic stuff, but then mixes a little bit of the mundane with it, too. So you have, like, crazy aliens and stuff like that, but really, I mean, it's not that weird. It's just these guys' day job, and, you know, they... You know they're they're not any different than like traffic cops and stuff like that. Really, I really want to know what they do with their time off because you know they have to sleep or you know have some sort of personal time. Well, I think just... he even mentions in this movie, doesn't he, that they run on like an Octurian clock, which yeah. is like seven days cycle <laughs> without any sleep or something. And he's like, yeah, you get used to it after a while. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like so some Martian crack that'll keep you up for a couple of days. Yeah, Don't probably, worry. <laughs> oh, I'm sure the MIB has the good stuff. Yeah, right. For sure. <laughs> But yeah, they, they're actually pretty trigger happy because you think about all the aliens that they just kind of, you know, uh, unjudiciously blow the crap out of all the time in the show. Poor Jack Jeebs. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get into Jeebs in a little bit. <laughs> I'd well, say he's but one he of my at least they know you can blow you know part of him up and it grows back. Uh -huh. Except for that part, Will Smith threatens to th shoot that won't grow back. <laughs> but I was like, I, I think uh, Men in Black kind of set up this weird trope that. Uh, you know, when crazy superheroic or supernatural things go down, that there's some kind of uh, scrub company that comes through and wipes our memories of it and makes us kind of forget or covers, you know, covers it up. Have you ever read the comic books for these? No, in fact, for the longest time, I had no idea that it was even based on a comic book. Yeah. I uh, kind of looked over the synopsis of it, and uh, the Men in Black weren't the only extraterrestrial life, but they were paranormal oh. and... Uh, conspiracies and everything like that like they covered the whole area yeah, I guess they wanted to sort of narrow it down for the movie to consolidate it a little bit but that's pretty cool I didn't realize that they took on Ghostbuster stuff a lot right and then uh, Tommy Lee Jones wouldn't even sign on until they promised him there would be a better script that re revolved around kind of the actual comic book uh, hmm. lifestyle that it had 
He, so he wanted to make it a little more a little more dry, a little more what closer to the original source material or something. Yeah, but he's like, I want some hilarity in it. Don't get me wrong, yeah. but I've read these comic books and this is how I want it portrayed. I That's don't want cool you to just like to... have your own crazy ideas about it. This I, is how I we need to make it. Keep it kind of on track on a certain vision that he saw I, I just feel bad for that actor that had to wear all that blue goo he, <laughs> he probably spent at least a day or more you know filming this this whole scene and sequence and he's just hanging out with I, uh, I always feel bad. I, I read Bruce Campbell's book a long time ago if chins could kill and he talks about wearing like uh, all the caro syrup or whatever it is for all the blood and just how uh -huh. horrible and sticky it was and I don't know. I, 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 back in like middle school, I did some plays where I had to wear spirit gum so I could have a fake mustache. I can grow oh, yeah. my own mustache nowadays. <laughs> Come you on, know, you I, couldn't do it in elementary school. Come not, on. Not like. when I was thirteen. When I was fourteen, I, I was like, you know, shaving like Grizzly Adams every day. But, um, the, uh, but yeah, like I, every time I see a movie and I actually kind of meta the movie and think about it a little outside the, you know. Uh, drop my suspension of disbelief and start thinking that's a guy covered with goo I really feel bad for that actor <laughs> all the time he had to spend covered in goo for that 30 seconds of shot you know right so there's a cool intro that tells you exactly everything you need to know about Will Smith's character I always thought this guy right here uh, was Seth Green for like the longest like time him, yeah. I thought it was Seth Green <laughs> and then with a yeah. whole totally 90s haircut and everything <laughs> man I should be rainy black his, his black first, in New York. His first improv line in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Man, look at his outfit. I forget how cool, you know, 90s rapper style was. Right. <laughs> that bridge that he just jumped off of? Yeah. Does it look familiar to you? Yeah, from that's from Avengers, right? Uh, close. That's where they fought on Avengers. That is... Uh, Grand Central Station. Where he gets... Uh, chased down by zombie dogs in I Am Legend. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. It's the same yeah. bridge. Yeah, it's, I've been right there at that bridge. I had to kill oh, really? the once, yeah. Fun. Yeah, it was all right. It was really early in the morning. I it's was like, really oh, tired, cool. too tired to appreciate it, that's for sure. <laughs> it's like, oh, cool. Bridge. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that crazy weapon, the way it disintegrates. Like, really weird. Mm -hmm. Oh, it looked more like a special effect from Logan's run. It kind of sets nice. itself up for failure. I mean, if they drop their gun, then... <laughs> Good luck uh, oh, picking it back up to shoot anyone. There's a Guggenheim Museum. I've been in that museum before. Actually, when I was in it, it's a big spiral as you go up to the top of it. And I really wanted to grab a skateboard and just ride it all the way down and out. <laughs> I of think everybody Avenue. that's ever seen the inside of the Guggenheim has thought yeah. the exact same thing. <laughs> it's sure. like, can I just get like a go kart or a skateboard or something and just keep going round and round? <laughs> no, seriously, it would be the coolest uh, ramp ever. Ah, uh, they're yeah, so I, 90s. But this is the thing, you know, that sets Will Smith up for this movie, is the fact that he, he, he doesn't stop. He just does whatever he's got to do to catch this guy. <laughs> you know, even... Uh, oh, this is actually the first time I've seen this movie since I've been to the Guggenheim. It's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> but um, there's a lot <coughs> less artwork being shown. I wonder if they actually couldn't show any, because, you know, it's all on the walls. Yeah. There, but that's, that's really weird. They're like, totally oh, it looks like Seth Green. the less that we have to shoot, the less we have to pay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I wonder if there's something about that. Oh, yeah, um, see, they're all covered up with, like, yeah, drapes were, and huh? everything. <laughs> yeah, for all we know, I guess they do that every night, but... Man, look how sweaty he is. <laughs> Why is he wearing an orange jumpsuit like he's a criminal and he's a cop? Yeah, it almost... Like <laughs> maybe he was working undercover as a construction guy, and that was his, you know, reflective PPE gear. No, I love the way this guy blinks, though. It really is creepy. No, I said... There's something about eyes and, and like, look, weird blinking. Yeah. <laughs> something about people's eyes when things like that happen to it or like in Prometheus or The Strain where like little worm things come out of people's eyes it's yeah <laughs> something like that's always a nice subtle freak out kind of thing Chappie comes out tomorrow that's a movie by Neil Blomkamp, Blomkamp yeah that I can't wait to see I just call him District 9 guy it's yeah. easier to pronounce on Blomkamp <laughs> that District 9 guy he does the districts and the nines and the aliens and things <laughs> <laughs> oh man um, okay so this so we're about to introduce the villain here in a really great way where he just crashes into this guy's truck and you don't feel bad for the villain killing this guy because he really is such a jerk to yeah he was a bad guy in the first place <laughs> he just deserves every bad thing that's coming to him but real quick story about this character with the cockroaches there was one time when I lived in Florida we go over to these people's house and uh, and and 
they, they had they had roaches everywhere. We'd be hanging out, sitting on their couch, and the roaches were just climbing over everything. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. So all the time, like one time, uh, me and my friend left, and he's like, "We got to get home. I got to pee so bad." I'm like, "Why did you just pee there?" And he's like, "Are you kidding? I didn't know it was gonna come out. I thought it was like, <laughs> gonna be some giant cockroach, like Men in Black, show up going sugar and water." <laughs> I didn't trust that bathroom. <laughs> it's almost like Joe's apartment. If you've ever seen that one, yeah, on TV. I actually love Joe's apartment. They just Where? walk in, and there would be like a. Cockroach just like sitting on the toilet reading the daily newspaper yeah. like hey Joe what? what's up Joe? <laughs> based on that old MTV short yep <laughs> this guy I think I heard somewhere that he's playing uh, Kingpin on Daredevil now Vincent D'Onofrio yeah yeah I was like oh that guy is good he looks pretty good he looks like he's gained a lot of weight since this but I mean it has been, been almost twenty, 20 years, years. Yeah. So. <laughs> been like, a minute like I say we were we were sitting there just this laugh podcast discussing how we wanted to start doing some of the more recent stuff and get into the MCU and everything we're kind of back to like our favorite <laughs> old ones from the 80s and 90s well if you're gonna do things about like alien takeovers and superheroes and stuff like that start with one of the originals you know like yeah, where sure. the visual effects start taking hold and uh yes, dang it these kids nowadays don't appreciate what started at all i tell you what i don't really understand they don't even know what a no- noisy cricket is <laughs> I, I read this great blog where a guy set up a whole blog where um he had his 11 year old son and a bunch of his friends at a sleepover watch uh, james cameron aliens from <laughs> 1986 and a lot of them are watching like, like this is like every sci-fi ever this is like the most cliched movie and another kid goes dude this movie was made in 1986 it started all those cliches <laughs> it is the og of the cliche for reals right sugar <laughs> and water <laughs> What's wrong with your face? And he just grabs. You is that better? Not better. <laughs> yeah, the special effects and gags in this were really good. I, I didn't really. I remember seeing the second one because so all of them are spaced so far out. Because like the first one came out in 1997, the second one I think came out in 2002 or three. Mm-hmm. So like five six years later. And then it was what like ten years later the MIB three came out. Yeah, which I, I I saw when I was working in the oil fields. I only kind of didn't pay attention. I remember it was it was good, but yeah. somehow I don't remember the two sequels being as as breakout and and special and original as this one was. Heck, my I, favorite I mean, one this one had that second one. <laughs> I, I, I've seen it again since. Like Alicia, we were just watching it the other day at uh, your parents' house. Your brother had it on. Remember? Yeah. And like I was watching that with him and. Uh, and I, it's it's better than I remember it, but somehow like I don't know this this original this first one is yeah it's just so much more special. I think it was because it was just like hey here's a brand new movie idea yeah take this <laughs> well, it, it somehow it comes across to me as like Ghostbusters where you know it has it has this really weird you know uh, uh, shtick to it yeah you know but it also kind of just takes these guys and you know instead of ghosts this one's more like aliens. But this is just kind of their day job, and they just got to do what they got to do. You know, it's like uh-huh. that line toward the end where he's like, but "Jay or no, K, we got to do this because the, the the fate of the world is at stake, and it's going to get blown up." He's like, "Kid, the world is always about to get blown up. Like, this is so normal." He's like, "The only way that the world keeps going, the economy doesn't crash, and people keep you know living on this mud ball like they do, is because they don't know about it. <laughs> That's our job." <laughs> You know, so I think the second one was my favorite, and I can sum up exactly why it was my favorite one in two words: Rosario Dawson. Oh, yeah. <laughs> got a little crush on her, do you? Will? Oh, I haven't. I have for ages. You know, your wife's right behind you, right? Oh yeah, that's okay. <laughs> we talk like that all the time. Yeah, she has a crush on her too. Yeah, why not? <laughs> that's, that's, it's a new that's world. Why I dang it. Whenever Alicia sees what Ryan Reynolds or whoever. Oh, he's yeah. like, oh, he's so hot. I'm like, I know, I'd go out with him myself. <laughs> Goodness. I'd let him dead my pool. <laughs> <laughs> I'd let him green my lantern. <laughs> nah, maybe not as good. Did you oh, see what Jim... Oh, go ahead. Oh, so here comes a big flash. That's great, because we all know what it is. It's such a great gag in this. Is it... Is it a... Oh, the what is it? Is it a, one of the... Uh, Thingy Mabobs from uh, that one show with the robots and the uh, leaving Earth Transformers uh, and the uh, going to the Mecca Cylon Battlestar there Galactica. There you go, Cylons. <laughs> <laughs> I could have said Battlestar Galactica. Wait, but I wanted why were you to, talking about Cylons again? <laughs> <laughs> took us so long to get there. I kind of forgot why. <laughs> the Neuralizer kind of looks like one of the old Cylons and everything like that, with like the rounded. Oh yeah, because it's got that, that, that red eye, uh, singular eye. Yeah, I thought it was one of the members of Daft Punk. Huh. <laughs> maybe uh, maybe that's how it might be. They didn't actually get it from Alien specifically, but it's just old technology. Because we all know that, you know, that Galactica, the, the you know, it's just people came from outer space and had mm-hmm. sex with cavemen and created all of us. Yep. 
That's basically <laughs> the you know premise behind Battlestar Galactica. It's a weird show. I'll show it to you later, honey. Oh, it's a really good one. <laughs> it's really. I cool. never watched the original series, but the kay, remakes kay. are pretty good. Once we get through Gilmore Girls, <laughs> and then Firefly, and then Heroes, we got to watch Battlestar Galactica. Agreed? In that order, <laughs> we all heard it here on this podcast. <laughs> uh, feel free to leave a comment and ask if we she actually there's so it. many zippers <laughs> there's so many zippers Will Smith why you got so many zippers it on actually jump, looks jumper. like the, the fire resistant overalls I, coveralls I had to wear when I worked in the oil fields <laughs> like I say maybe he was undercover as a, like a construction guy kind of like on Ghostbusters 2 but then he wears the like white jersey underneath it it's <laughs> so 90s Will Smith why are you so 90s <laughs> because he is Will Smith the thing is I'm pretty sure he still kind of dresses like this sometimes right man oh, it's so weird how, it. how like young he looks because now he's like I mean he's, he's kind of older he still looks really good and stuff but he's also like so like oh, the guy's been working out now so, like crazy ever since I Am Legend oh yeah so isn't this uh, is this the same guy that played Antonio on Wings and Monk yeah Tony Shalhoub uh, yeah okay sure it always throws me off because I forget they give him like fake teeth and those those ears <laughs> and his eye that's always askew. Uh huh. So, but I, for the longest time I remember as a kid because I, I loved Wings. I yeah. kid you not. Like freaking uh, what Giggity Goo from Family Guy. Quagmire. Quag, Quagmire. Yeah. <laughs> he what he's like going. Ah, you idiots! You don't even watch Wings. I love Wings. <laughs> that was me. I loved Wings and I loved uh, Antonio. You know, Tony uh -huh. And anyway, for the longest time I thought this was him, but I wasn't sure. And he was in Galaxy Quest. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, was the the guy who was always high, the engineer. He, he's the only one that was like that got transported to the ship, and I, once the liquid stuff went away, it's just like that was cool. Yeah. <laughs> How was that comic, by the way? Have you been reading that? Oh, uh, I've only made it like halfway through the first uh, issue. I've had other engagements that I've been trying to get through, no, such as Transformers. Yeah, and, I finally uh, gave him more than meets the eye that I was talking about all throughout our Transformers podcast. For reals, everybody out there in podcast land, YouTube, wherever you're listening to this, if you love comic books and you're, you know, you're okay with robots, and even if you're not, seriously, go pick up More Than Meets the Eye from IDW by James Roberts. Yeah, and usually Alex Mill in drawing. I had a hard time with uh, the Transformers comics for the sheer fact that it was metal people or robot people in it's, a robot ship on a robot planet, and everything kind of just looked like a everything. Blended together. Everything <laughs> is more than meets the eye. <laughs> yeah. But uh, these ones, it's a little bit, it's a lot better at kind of clarifying what's it's, what. It's really good. All the characters the are very, everything's right very character driven. It does a lot with world building and, uh -huh. you know, setting up uh, a lot of people's wants and desires. I think the Transformers is a really weird book because, you know, so many people are like, oh, they're robots. How do I write robots? But really, you just write them as people who are in robot bodies. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> this guy's figured it out. So, James Roberts, I tip my hat to you. I love the uh, whole running gag in that comic, the. <laughs> PFFT. How do you make that sound? Yeah. Seriously, will somebody please tell me how Because to make he doesn't that have sound? lips because he has like an Optimus Prime type face. So, uh, <laughs> he's like, I don't know how to make that sound. <laughs> uh, but uh, so they, they got Will Smith, so he's kind of recruiting him. Will Smith just saw that guy's head get blown off and then, you know, grow back. Will Smith's all drunk. Look at all those beer bottles in front of him. <laughs> well, I think that's what they're setting him up to think because he just neuralized him right he's obviously not going to try to like you know give he's him like, alcohol dude you're so drunk like <laughs> it makes you want but you know at least he's nice enough to give him a card and I, I don't know I think it's kind of cool to see how the men in black recruit people and try to figure out how they're serious you know yeah and uh, I, I don't know I, I think it's funny how uh, how hard it is to be an agent how many people scrub out because like one thing that I remember liking about the second one was when they have uh, Putty from Seinfeld on there yeah. the guy that has the voice of Joe on Family uh -huh. Guy and uh, the you tick. know Brock Samson <laughs> yeah the tick uh, pa pa Patrick Warburton that's there you the go but he uh, I, I love the fact that he's been Jay's partner for a long time and been an agent but he he doesn't quite measure up he doesn't quite have what it takes he keeps screwing up and it's actually really hard to be a men in black agent you know they're really special charismatic guys Mm -hmm. Oh, and here's where you find out his aversion <laughs> to killing insects, especially cockroaches. Um, doesn't he take this guy's van or something like that? And it's kind of ironic. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, giant bug driving around in a bug zapper van. Nobody will ever suspect a thing. It's kind of funny <laughs> how the guy looks sort of like a bug with the with his gas mask on top of him. Yeah. Looks like bug eyes and stuff like that, and insect wings on his back. Here comes the only, like, human death that we see in this entire show. Is it really? I would assume so. Oh, wow. So. What a way to go, too. Pesticide <laughs> right down your throat. He's wearing knee braces. 
Yeah. And he taped his ankles. That way he could get that look of not being able to move his limbs and being, like, stuck in oh, another body. Oh, you mean body. The, the... Vincent Vince, D'Onofrio? Okay, that's playing the cockroach guy. Yeah. Here. The bug. <laughs> yeah, okay, man. Yeah, because his physicality in this is top-notch. Like, I mean, he's... he's I always thought he was an amazing guy, and I, 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 I always wondered what else he was in, but I figure I couldn't tell because he's probably one of those actors who's so good that you don't quite recognize him yeah. from one part to another. Uh, but there's I, been a couple people there's, like that. In my there's life. something about this. There's there's kind of a, again a, a shtick, a genre. I don't know what to say, but like this and Hellboy. Oh, we gotta do Hellboy someday. Absolutely. But, um, you know where where you have the secret society, the secret organization that helps battle. You know. Uh, Oh, what is it? Man versus things. himself, man versus nature, and man versus the supernatural are the three uh-huh. things that you know. Uh, and so I guess this all fits under supernatural. Oh, definitely. Even, even you know, being extraterrestrial or whatever. This is probably my favorite part of the whole freaking movie. Like uh, them doing the whole recruitment thing with yeah, the best, all the best, little the tests, best. <laughs> sir. Yeah, and, and Connors. The, oh my gosh, it almost does give me a headache when he's dragging this desk over. <laughs> but it makes perfect sense, like how he does that. I don't know. I always thought to myself, like if it was me, I probably would have stood up and stood behind the chair and just used that as a table. Right. Especially <laughs> once I heard what it sounds like when you try to drag the table. <laughs> <laughs> I would just sit down like a uh, thank you, lovely, I like a. Uh, preteen girl looking through her glamour magazine when she's all on her elbows yeah. and <laughs> legs are kicked up behind her and she's laying on her stomach <laughs> right you're the best of the best sir <laughs> Will Smith kind of makes fun of him he, he really shouldn't make fun of our fighting with honor like that <laughs> <laughs> what else is Rip Torn in like I know I've seen him all over the place and stuff but he, Freddie got fingered and he's in all three of these uh, no I don't think he was in the third one I think they had a lady that was because he had died by uh, that that's point that's right yeah some lady that was his uh, superior officer in that oh man he's in so many things all of which he's kind of one of those oh he was in that it's that's that guy. why oh, I remember him in that. that no I just saw a thing on uh, crack.com where it showed uh uh, Rusty from uh, Christmas Vacation. Uh-huh. It's actually Leonard on Big Bang Theory. And oh like, yeah, no way! <laughs> yeah, I did catch that. that. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's so funny. And he was like, "What's her face's boyfriend on Roseanne?" And I can't wait for the new uh, Rusty Griswold with Paul Rudd. What? The new National Lampoon's uh, vacation movie is going to be what? Paul Rudd as Rusty. And then it's gonna have his whole family. Oh, and they're wow. gonna get into some shenanigans. Of course, of, of Those course Chevy, Chevy Chase has got a cameo. I'm sure, he'll have a Beverly cameo. Beverly D'Angelo on that. Oh, that'll be cool. I want to know. Vegas Vacation was only okay, but like the other ones are all classic. I wonder who they're gonna get to play Aubrey. Oh yeah, the daughter. Well, they always get somebody. I'm, I'm, they can only do like forty different Aubreys. Well, the, the, the kids are different in yeah. each one. <laughs> but I always, I think Christmas Vacation is my favorite. So I always remember. Uh, What's his face? Leonard from Big Bang, and uh-huh. also um, uh, Juliet Dreyfus is her name. Yep. Juliet Lewis. She was in the one where they went to go pick. It was Christmas Vacation. Yeah, she was and I one. remember we just saw her in the switch, and she looked all different now and everything. And yeah. <laughs> anyway, ball, um, uh, uh, dodgeball was another one he was in. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, but I, I love the fact that everyone they, they're trying to do it on their lap, and those chairs are so uncomfortable. There you, go. You, you can probably hear that sound on the audio in this. Right. I can't even tell you how many times that I've wanted one of those chairs. Like one of the egg chairs. I would put an egg chair all around in, these I just, in this living room right now. <laughs> <laughs> that would be doing the podcast at my house every day. Um, I am not sitting in an egg. <laughs> no, they look interesting, but they always just make me think of on Venture Brothers when uh, Dr. Venture sits his son down in one of them and gives him Pink Floyd to listen to and he leaves him for like an hour but then realizes oh no I've left him listening for too long and he comes in he's like so zoned out and high from the music and <laughs> sitting in that chair just experiencing Floyd you know? he's just like he's just like whoa he's like transcended everything <laughs> um, I love this I, part it's Gosh, so great. every part of this whole recruitment part is so you funny. got the little girl yeah but she's like reading quantum physics books he up to something no good you that guy he was just working out good. like he ain't trying to you know <laughs> that's my best will smith impression i'm really sorry i apologize to everybody <laughs> this guy's <laughs> just working out I'm yeah he's gonna bother you this guy's all sad he's what was he about? oh yeah that's right oh, <laughs> like i said this movie was so much fun it had so many great gags and stuff and really fought against a lot of the tropes of what you know, sci-fi or alien movies were. And yeah. It wasn't scary. It was it was just fun. And, like, the stakes were high, but they weren't. You know, because, like I say, yeah, the stakes are the Earth, you know, like, you got to save the world. And that's basically every superhero movie out there. But at the same time, it was, like, it was so... This movie made it so normal. 
yeah. this movie made you not worry that much about it, yet you still wanted them to succeed. Mm-hmm. So I, you walk a fine line when you make a movie like this, and this one just it's like, oh, if these the two fail, there's a whole agency of agents. Well, like. yeah, and, and just the fact that you know you realize that uh, they must know what they're doing, so it's going to be okay in the end because uh-huh. they apparently deal with this on a weekly basis, and you know, and I. I know. I, I I think it's interesting that with this one, he, you know, he really is training him as his replacement. You find out at the end. Yeah. But then you know the other two, they bring him right back. Anyway. <laughs> I guess you have to. The dynamic doesn't really work unless you have Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones, or at least Tommy Lee Jones' character. Because honestly, Josh Brolin did a, a really good Tommy Lee Jones impression. He did for that a third wonderful movie. job at it. Yeah, totally. Man, even Rip Torn's goatee looks a little '90s, or at least early 2000s. You know, this movie does look a little better on Blu-ray, but it, it just looks exactly like I remember it. <laughs> you know? I don't wonder how much this Blu-ray's weird, really been remastered. But, <laughs> but, but at least it's in widescreen. Like, that was one of the great things, I think, that came out of the, yeah. the turnaround from VHS to DVD was the fact that everyone realized, even when we still had old tube and CRT or whatever televisions, you know, before they mm-hmm. were all widescreen, people finally started going, you know what, screw the black bars on the top and bottom, we're going to present this in widescreen from now on. Yeah, I can't tell you how many times I had to argue with people about, hey, stop watching the full screen, stop buying the full screen version, I will not watch a DVD if you buy a full screen yeah, version. Yeah, seriously, and I actually hate I it at the beginning wide of like, like your Monsters Inc. Inc. DVD, honey, like ask you if you want you know widescreen or full screen and you're like who's gonna unless you're a kid who doesn't know what they're doing who's gonna pick full screen <laughs> why even give people. us a choice <laughs> yeah old people I guess people above their age of 60 <laughs> you know so there's this whole kind of backstory that they get into in this a little bit with uh, how uh, what Kay was just a guy who happened to be on his way to meet a girl with the flowers mm-hmm. and what well, he ran into the whole alien landing that was there when the Men in Black was founded when the MIB was founded I probably watched this a dozen times when I was a teenager before I finally actually paid attention and realized that backstory. Right. <laughs> so it kind of skipped over my head, or I don't know. They, they plant you a couple clues along the way. I, I didn't quite pay oh, enough attention that to it, handsome, I guess, That but. tall fella, flowers. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And the, and the fact that it also adds up to whoever the girl is. I didn't quite realize that the girl was just a, a girlfriend that he was courting at the time. I literally thought it was his wife that he just left at some point. And I'm like, right. Oh. <laughs> Case like, kind sorry, of a jerk. <laughs> Somehow these weird penis aliens became like a, you know, a, a staple of the show. <laughs> they really did. I mean, they even stole the cartoon away for the most part too. Yeah, they, they were all over that. Do you ever watch that cartoon? Oh, Do you ever watch that cartoon, Alicia? No. It was it was really cool. It was on on mm-hmm. Saturday mornings, and it was you know. Jane and Kay going around, you know, solving mysteries and stuff. And even the girl who's the mortician that we're going to meet here in a little while was one of the main characters, except she was blonde in that. Instead yeah. Of the oh, my gosh, sure. there's the World Trade Center. That's one thing about watching these old movies yeah. or, like, Friends or anything like that. Oh, my gosh, Friends. Like, every other establishing shot is the World Trade Center up to a point. <laughs> I uh, made the most tasteless joke the other day. Uh, or at the freaking podcast. Or not podcast. At the, the pub, pub quiz. quiz. Pub quiz podcast that Pub Shannon quiz. Barnson does. Yeah, Geek Show says. I'll hey. tell you about it later, but <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's it not, a good it's laugh, not for but... recording on you know yeah, for posterity. We don't, we don't need to have that floating around. I can't I'd rather wait not to have hear that on my head. <laughs> if it's really good, I'll tell you all about it later. No, we won't. <laughs> <laughs> what Mike does is Mike's business, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> what is that little light in there for? I guess it's in case you're performing. Well, our microphone has like this neon light that's shining out of it, and it's always been there, but I've never noticed it before because we're we're trying to hold it in our hands and pass it with e- between each other. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying to improve the audio quality on these things. But every now and then, like when you point it at me, it shines right in my face. It's right. Like, ah! <laughs> me too. I'm just like ah. I, know, I wish it was like a light turn off button thing I can easily just take like a uh, it was jab it needle out or the, something and just like pop it real ice quick pick or whatever the no it's, it's fine I just every now and then it catches my eyes ah! Ah! it looks so cool though it's kind of like our, the leprechaun it's kind of like when, when if, if you're driving and the person next to you is playing with their phone their cell phone and the sun shines right from it right into your eyes yep. as you're driving you're like can you just put your phone away for crying out loud yeah Alicia laughs she knows exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> it happens with my 3DS all the time because it's all shiny and red and it just oh, like yeah. catches the light and sends it Every which direction. Blinding all your friends and family. That's why I like matte black things, because it's like, oh. Oh, oh, so this whole scene of him relaxing by the bay and kind of walking around New York to have a night to think about it, I swear that's like a, it's almost like you can't make a film in New York or set in New York 
without having the character have a whole montage of taking a night to think about something and walking through the city. I'm trying to think of examples, but I uh, not off the top of my head. Right. <laughs> I love how that entire portion of the truck is just, like, banged up. Yeah, because like... I'm trying to stuff a, a, a guy in there. A spaceship. Spaceship. <laughs> I'm surprised he was able to fit in. I'm quite impressed. I know. That, those, that cockroach monster can really collapse. There's the 90s gear again. <laughs> Still so awesome, 90s. <laughs> I kind of wish people would dress like that. Somehow, at this point in my life, like, I always thought 80s stuff was cool, but I've uh, lately I've been reflecting a lot on what we used to wear, like even as a kid when I was like ten, around nineteen or right. ninety one or so. It's like, the it's that time of year. It really was like that year. The colors, the, the hot pink, again. the neon green. I loved it. Uh huh. We're like Jim and the uh, oh, the Jim and the holograms. The holograms. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I saw a, a, a picture of that movie finally coming out. It looks terrible. <laughs> Did you see it? Did you see what I uh, tagged you in the other day? Which one? With the revival of F. Revival of F. Frieza. Oh, no. I haven't seen anything new from oh. that. The new Dragon Ball movie? You're missing a golden Frieza. See, I told you I don't check Facebook that often. Oh. <laughs> Michael, my girlfriend? we have to watch it after this. Okay, okay. It's so freaking cool. Is it like a whole trailer? It is a whole trailer. It's all in Japanese, oh. of course. Here's the yeah, oh, no, okay. central. I'm of down. I'm, all I'm down to watch black. it when we're done. So this is the fun part where finally they reveal to him all the different aliens and stuff like that. That looks so cool. I, I, it's great because he does a good job. Like you, you know that he he thought he was prepared and he thought he knew what he was getting into, but he is so you know a fish out of water. Like, he's so yep. <laughs> it, it makes for a great bridge character between you know the audience and, and all the other <laughs> characters. I love but, how there's people just waiting around, knowing exactly what they're going to do, so that they can open the door for them. That's a good point, <laughs> huh? Well, it makes you wonder. Maybe Kay's actually given this tour a few times with a few different people recently, and they're kind of down with the routine. Because, I mean, look, it's really hard to find someone to, to work here. And yeah. So What's they this? Come, come <laughs> say something about this ball, how it caused the blackout back in the 70s or yep. something, or whatever it was. That's pretty cool. I love how, like, uh, Rip Torn's character, he just totally dodges it. He's kind of <laughs> used to it happening every now and then. <laughs> Where everyone else is a little freaked out. That guy gets knocked out. It's so awesome. <laughs> like I said, the gags ding, 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 in this movie are ding, so ding. solid. Right, right through, through the, the donut, donut hole. hole. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, oh, right in the room with all the... <laughs> it just starts, like, all these chemical fires. Will Smith's and... reaction sells it, too. Yeah, Will Smith. Oh. Only one person can play Will Smith. And actually, maybe maybe Damon Wayans can kind of play Will Smith, but we haven't seen him I would for a say while, uh, so. <laughs> Damon Wayans Jr. Yeah, he did the voice of Wasabi in Big Hero 6 yep. recently. And he is hilarious. Gosh, what else is he in? Cause he's in the new girl. The okay, yeah. And he is absolutely hilarious. He's like coach. They call him coach because he's like a coach. He's a okay. personal <laughs> trainer and everything like that. And he's like, you guys really got to teach me how to like talk to women because I got this new female client and I don't know what it is. I just talk to her like I normally would anybody else and she just runs off crying every time. And it's just him going... Get off, you maggot! Come on! Push her! Push her! Saying all worthy or being on her? Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey shares who's your favorite character in Big Hero 6? Wasabi. Nice. Uh, that's why she likes David Wins Jr. You know who my favorite character in Big Hero 6 was? Who's that? Me in the audience not enjoying it. Oh, <laughs> I remember we had that disagreement a while back. We'll talk about this later. Look we'll at all the different people that are aliens, though, like Sylvester Stallone. George Lucas teacher. is up there. Is George Lucas up there? <laughs> Steven Spielberg is up there. Oh, of course Spielberg would be. He's one of the producers on this, right? Yeah. Oh, Newt Gingrich, I think, Newt who Gingrich. was the Speaker of the House at the time. A very, I don't know. I, Al Roker. Don't get me started on Newt Gingrich. Danny yeah, Al DeVito. Roker, huh? Oh, my gosh. Danny DeVito is definitely here's an alien. what the weather's like in your neck of the woods. <laughs> Danny DeVito has to be. It's going to rain! <laughs> Ollie Williams. Oh, is it? Oh, Ollie yeah. Williams. <laughs> Thanks, Ollie. That. It's raining! <laughs> our Black U weather report. <laughs> so it's crazy that they delete everything about him and make him. I, I know, I like the handprint thing that burns him off here. Yeah. But you know, when I was like two years old, I don't remember it, and thank goodness I don't, but I, I walked up to a wood-burning burning stove that we had in the middle of the Ooh. living room up in Montana, put my hands right on it, almost burned them off. Oh, I'm Somehow, sure. though, like, they put some... My mom rushed me to cold water first... 
then you know took me to the doctor like right away and they put some kind of silver that like absorbs heat some kind of silver coating all over my hands and then wrapped them in bandages for two weeks like aluminum phosphate yeah, or so, something somehow though I still have fingerprints I don't know how Will Smith burned his off right there but alien that technology always, I guess so yeah because it always made me think of that like well mine didn't burn off so and that was with a wood burning stove I don't know what that machine is I'm surprised they let them have facial hair and stuff I wonder what the well, dress no, policy of, is of course they let them have a mustache all the military and cops they all let you have a mustache I can't wait to see Agent H, and that Agent H is Agent Hipster, and he's uh-huh. just got, like, rasta dreads and, like, a big beard, and he wears a beanie all the time, and, like, black sunglasses. Is that for reals? Or? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, wait, is this in a comic or a cartoon or something? Agent Hipster. I think this, this, this guy playing the little cat owner, the- alien guy, he's in a lot of movies. I can't think of any which ones, but, like, his... Uh, assistant or friend or whoever that he's going to meet the really big tall guy uh-huh. he's in all kinds of movies like he played uh, uh, Loxana Troy's you know valet or you know her, her man her luggage carrier guy on, on The Next Generation he played Lurch in both fam- Adam's Family movies ah that's um, how I recognized him like I'm yeah, always wondering he's so. one of those guys who's just this really tall bit player in Hollywood and I love he, that he also has a, a tendency to never talk in like any movie that he's in in, in this one, I mean, he kind of talks, but he speaks that really weird alien language. Of course, Lurch never talked in Adam's family. And then I think he has one line in all of Star Trek The Next Generation, all the episodes that he showed up in where he just he got really drunk one time. And as they're sending him away at the end of the episode, he finally says something like, Thank you for the drinks. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really... Anyway, he's, he's just... This movie's full of a bunch of bit players like that. Like, like Doug Jones, how you see him playing like Silver Surfer and Abe yeah. Sapien and... All the creatures and pan labyrinth and stuff. He's, I, I, I love. I, I always respect guys like that and try to follow them or find out who they are in different movies. Because mm-hmm. it's like they're carrying like the whole aspect of the show, like what you should convey from this character, and then you don't even really get to see their face or anything like that. So yeah, it's like they deserve that. They have to. They have credit. to express so much more. There's so much more of a whole different style of acting there. And honestly, maybe it's because that's more always been my style of acting. Like. Anytime I've ever had to do on-camera work and be normal, it's way too hard for me. Uh-huh. I don't know if you can tell just by the way I talk on these podcasts, but I'm just not a very... I'm, I'm not a guy that's been on subtleties. So <laughs> I'm not very good at it, I should say. <laughs> we're very flamboyant if there were, were a word to describe us. <laughs> that's, that's one way to do it. Yeah. Uh, I like this Ford car because it reminds... Uh, I know he makes fun of it, but it literally does remind me of one that my grandma had. So dumb. right there, they're obviously speeding up the camera, but, yeah. <laughs> the frames per second. But <laughs> it's like, so. what was the point of going in reverse, except for to show off? Yeah, it's such like an old school film technique, movie <laughs> technique. But I, I love it. Somehow the movie gets away with it, probably because it's an old movie now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that cab looks haggard. I would not get in that cab. Especially if you're just spray painting the numbers on your side. I miss <laughs> I miss all the old cabs that they used to use, like like Phoebe's grandma had on Friends. Yep. And all I remember when I first went to New York City, I was 12 years old, so that would have been like 1992 or 93, and they'd finally just barely switched over to Crown Victorias. Oh, and right. I, yeah, and like I remember seeing, well, those are, look like all the cabs in the movies I've seen. <laughs> I was actually really disappointed. How do you like that cat? Will I love that cat? Are you You're kidding me? Cat Orion's enthusiast. adorable. <laughs> oh, it is Orion. I forgot that's his name. <laughs> it's on Orion's belt. There's nothing on Orion's belt. <laughs> Ser- seriously, though, this movie goes a long way. Ha- having been to New York a couple of times, trust me, this movie goes a long way to uh, showing. I, there really are all these weird characters just walking around and hanging out and in in restaurants and stuff like that. And yeah, doing crazy things on the street and it's great. Actually, probably one of my my favorite bits on. Uh, the second one is once Kay gets his memory back and he walks outside and he, he's looking around and he sees those guys riding a bike that are like in Tron looking Yeah, and, with like a, all the little bobbles on him. Yeah, <laughs> and he sees like the per- person pushing the cart where it has a weird creature underneath all the garbage in the cart. And then like he goes to step on that cockroach but he doesn't, he thinks Sorry. about it and the cockroach says that great line, damn decent of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that guy. And so there's another human death. <laughs> it's kind of like what Sharbaka did to that one guy that I had. Yeah, to we were playing our Star Wars game. I were like, we can't fit him in the vent. Our game master said. So we're like, okay, we'll just have our Wookiee break his legs and shove him in. There. <laughs> break Any all the which bones way in you his can. body. <laughs> he allowed it. We got points for creativity on that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you think they'd recognize him or smell him or something? Ooh, wow! I forgot that he stabs him with weird needle things. Right ah, through the neck. That's next. creepy, man. 
I don't mind getting stuck with needles or whatever, but it freaks me out in movies for some reason. What I want to know is why does that kill the alien that's in his face? Oh, spoiler alert. Oh, maybe it took out the life support system in yeah, there. Yeah, I guess that could. You know, maybe by design, the life support system is kind of in the neck, not too different from how we are. Uh, there's a subtle reference to uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, like oh. the book in this. Huh. Because uh, uh, one of the, when Jay is like, or when Kay tells him, you know, there's like people just living amongst us, like, no big deal. Yeah. You can always get it. And uh, Jay goes, so cab drivers? <laughs> He's like, so the cab drivers are aliens, right? And that's a reference back to like uh, the very first uh, book, Thanks for All the Fish. And it's talking, they're talking about how uh, in the Hitchhiker's Guide, it says, one of the best ways to adapt to this culture is to become a cab driver. <laughs> you can learn exactly the terrain of the area. You learn different languages. And it's a great way to make money. <laughs> That's funny. I, I actually kind of remember that now that you mention it. Although I must say the first book is called Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I think So Long and Thanks for All the Fish is number three or four. Okay. I'm just clarifying. <laughs> it was a gnarly I, song, nonetheless. Look, if this is a nerdy <laughs> podcast, I'm going to get super nerdy on you. Yeah, that song. I, I man, still have my... Hey, Alicia, is this guy... Isn't that, isn't that Chris? Isn't that Rory's dad on Gilmore Girls? The guy playing the civilian alien guy here? Can't see his face. <laughs> oh, when you see his face, let me know. It totally looks like him. I'm just thinking, this must be in New Jersey because you got an actual green park, but you right. can look across and see the skyscrapers in New York. Either that or it's a fake background. But that's great where you got him taking all the beating from these tentacles. <laughs> look at those graphics. You can like, see Let's the face backdrop. It, what, what, backdrop. What, whenever <laughs> women in, are in labor, it's always pretty much like that, right? Am I right? Yeah. I'm getting a nasty look. Mazel <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the alien it's cute isn't it hell hydra <laughs> <laughs> it totally looks like that. see doesn't that kind of look like Chris from Gilmore Girl kind of but it's not him yeah it's definitely <laughs> not he's him. been in a couple things too and I don't know what he's another one of those yeah it's that, that guy, guy. <laughs> it's that guy oh and he gets spit on like that classic how does it taste I wonder how much of that puppet he's manipulating because usually like like even in Gremlins whenever he was holding the Mogwai he actually had to do the puppet <laughs> yeah Ugh, first day on the job. That's almost more like my job. I get shot with fluid all the time. Don't ask too many questions. <laughs> don't ask questions. <laughs> get to the choppa. You don't want to know what I do for a <laughs> I seriously love my job. It pays so well with all the commission that I make. Yeah, yeah you're lucky, man. dude. Especially after sweating your balls off all summer working for the city like that. And, and the sad thing is I would still turn in this job to go back. I would take a huge pay cut. It's fun working outdoors like that. Huh? Like a so desk job has fun. its perks, but at the same time, it's nice being out in the fresh air and stuff. And even if you are cleaning up, you know, the vomit from bums and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, poop, vomit, doesn't matter. I yeah. gotta do some landscaping. Maybe, maybe find a little Maybe heroin. you should join the Men in Black because you probably handle <laughs> all the kinds of stuff that they deal with. Right. That's great how the, uh, the, some of the best leads they find on cases are from like the Inquirer. And yeah. All those like magazines for Elvis stuff is an like alien. That. No, seriously, Elvis is yeah. an alien. <laughs> Elvis and Dad, you just went home. Got that line coming up later. Ooh, I want to drop a quick, uh, a uh, quick plug. Uh, if you guys haven't done it already, I would suggest getting Loot Crate. This month is going to be amazing uh-huh. because it's special or secret agent themed. And they've got a shirt coming. Not to mention they've got a limited edition uh, Loot Crate exclusive Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, cool. uh, collectible that's going to be coming along with it. And Is it Terrigen Mist to I make hope you an so. inhuman? I hope it's a Terrigen Crystal or something. Speaking of which... Sorry, Alicia's looking at us like, what are you talking about? <laughs> they said it. What? Oh, Agents of Inhuman? S.H.I.E.L.D. came back Wednesday. Did they say the word Inhuman or Terrigen Mist? Uh, they said both of them. Okay, But nice. they said Inhuman because uh, they're like, your blood pressure was above 300. She's like, that can't be. Or she's like, that... Or... But that's Inhuman. She's like, that's not normal. Oh. He's like, no. That's Inhuman. <laughs> <I was laughs> like, oh! dun, dun, dun. Ah, they said the word. It's awesome. I was like freaking out at work, and everybody's like, "You're freaking out over the word inhuman." Bro. <laughs> like, what are you thinking? Awesome. And you're gonna go all crazy over her inhuman. <laughs> <laughs> I think that they showed that picture of her husband hunting, and I think that deer was in the picture. I don't know, I'd have to go back and look. But it's it's great that Will Smith actually cares about these people. That Agent J cares about these people. <laughs> tries to give them like really good memories. And still, like I say, Will Will Smith. 
he he he's a good actor, but he's like somehow he gets away with acting like Will Smith. Like he's so unique and has so much presence like that. And and for you know, it's either good or bad, you know what I mean? Like it's yeah. It, it depends on what he's cast for, but he actually can act. Like he's done a really good job with a lot of really good dramatic roles and stuff. And I think we were talking back on the Matrix one, how he was almost cast as Neo, and thinking about yeah. how different of a movie that might have been if it was him instead of Keanu Reeves, because he definitely would have brought a Will Smithness to the part. Mm-hmm. But uh, like, like right here when he's saying these lines, like, yeah, you go, you you but you buy yourself, pick out some more clothes and stuff, because damn, Eat your stuff, buddy. yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, it's just it's. It's fun. Somehow he gets away with it. It's almost like Arnold Schwarzenegger and some of the lines that he gets away with saying, you know? Yeah. Is, uh, you know, where he's... Uh, yeah, yeah. And, of course, my brain yeah, farts yeah, on yeah, every yeah. Oh. Yeah, you cheese ball. <laughs> get to the chopper. You know? I'll be back. Like, you know, the way he delivers lines. Where, like, see you at the party, week, You know? Like, <laughs> like he, he just gets away with, with those general. one-liners, you know? I don't want the booster. Right. <laughs> You still have to watch that around the world in 80 Or like what he, what he throws, in, you know, so he can see him as the Egyptian guy. Yeah. <laughs> but like the part where he throws the machete at the guy in Predator and goes, stick around, you know. <laughs> it's just his accent, his presence, the way that he is. Schwarzenegger can just deliver lines like that. That's just like how Will Smith can do that. Oh, yeah. And say stuff like, welcome to Earth. <laughs> yep, that's one of my favorites. <laughs> Man, are we going to do a podcast of that one day? We definitely have to. Independence Day, crap. But I've got so many bad things to say. It's called Jeff Goldenstein. (laughs) Uh, uh, You know, the the aliens are actually um, working on a a timer, is what this is, (laughs) Um, by syncing up the satellites and... uh, you know that life <laughs> finds a way. The one movie where Jeff Goldblum doesn't lose his shirt, <laughs> <laughs> much to the dismay or of like, all the ladies in the audience, leave like the right? chest all <laughs> hanging out. You know? <laughs> he is Rachel Berry's dad in Glee, though, so I'll give him props for that. Oh, he's a he's a tall, large, good looking dude. He is know? good looking for his age. He's got like the silver fox going for him. He's all white hair. I still now. think the greatest role that he ever had was on The Simpsons, as he played Troy's Mc- Troy McClure's agent. <laughs> oh, Troy hey, McClure's. Hey, agent. Troy, it's your agent. I have an agent, <laughs> or whatever. He's like, it's like, have you ever heard of Planet of the Apes, the movie or the planet? <laughs> Multi-million-dollar Broadway musical. <laughs> so here's our first appearance with this girl, and I, I like the fact that uh, so many people that the MIB are trying to work with are fine. Show up at the morgue that they actually are here all the time. And Will Smith, figured, we keep calling Will Smith instead of Jay, but, right? <laughs> but how Jay, sh- you know, when they show up, Jay's like. Wait, how many times have you neuralized this woman? Like, you give her brain cancer or something. I love the receptionist for this part. You see him in two, the next two movie or these two movies. Yeah, what uh, what actor is he? Oh, I I know he's in other stuff, but I can't quite picture him in my mind right now. Let's see. Let's uh, just name off a couple of things. He was. Uh, oh, it's David Cross. Yes. Yeah, I remember now. Okay. I was gonna say. He I finally was, uh, saw it in my mind. Doctor Funke. Sure. Anal rapist. <laughs> right. <laughs> Anal <An> rapist. <laughs> Uh, he was Todd Margaret in the increasingly poor decisions of Todd Margaret. If you haven't watched that, for you know what I've, an awkward movie. As much as show. I love David Cross, I got to tell you, I am for one, I'm glad that he is actually a never nude. Right. I don't think he's a guy I'd want to see naked. I am a never nude. <laughs> uh, he also has a big uh, hand into Tenacious D. Oh, really? He was one of the people that helped like fund them and get their show on the go huh. and everything like that when they were had their HBO TV show so that's, that's pretty cool, cool man yeah thank goodness for him that him and Ben Stiller they're like the biggest two supporters of Tenacious D <laughs> Jack Black's just a little hit and miss but I yeah, bless bless that guy's heart man I love that guy <laughs> he is a little hit and miss yeah, I give like, him so uh, much credit for so many things except uh, he probably shouldn't have been cast in the holiday but that being said I love that guy <laughs> <laughs> yeah like uh, School of Rock was great uh, I, I, Tropic Thunder I don't care my jelly beans I, I, I got my jelly beans oh he was great in Tropic Thunder <laughs> I, I actually I really liked him in King Kong, which I yeah. know most people didn't. I liked him a lot in King Kong, except for that line delivery at the end. It was beauty that killed the beast. I'm like, <laughs> is that really the best take they got of that? Right. <laughs> Other than that, I love him in that movie. I think it's great. But, um, so yeah, I mean, this body that she is dissecting or whatever, it must have like, I guess they're artificial guts, or it makes you wonder if they gutted a human and stuck him inside this robot <laughs> body <laughs> just in case of such an emergency or something. But we have the technology. Yeah. <laughs> Built him faster, stronger, more alive. You feel that? Uh-huh. It looks like she had her Monroe pierced at one time. She her has Monroe? a little dimple, like, right here. Kind of oh. like I have. I know you can't tell because I have like, a mustache, that, but... Is that, is that like having your Fremen pierced? Because I don't think she has one, Will. Fremulon. 
<laughs> no, it's kind of weird. can't give a lady a Prince Albert for the last time. <laughs> I will give her a penis. Then I will give her a Prince Albert. <laughs> Don't tell she me doesn't what even I have a do. penis. I can work around that. <laughs> I can work up to that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> goodness. <laughs> so, um... This dude's blood on the... The blood splatter on the green part is all pink and stuff. It doesn't even, like, look like blood. You know, it's too bad, because I think by the end of this movie, like, she's his partner. She's his new partner. Uh-huh. But they allude to in the second one that she didn't make the cut, and that's why he has, you know, he's gone through all these other partners... But it's too bad, because she's a great character and kind of a fun foil for him. And, you know, it would have been good to see her again in the other ones. Especially considering, her, you know, her character is in the cartoon. Yeah, definitely. Does it, like, explain... It's been a while since I've seen the ending of the Men in Black animated series. But does it show, like, what she went through to have dropped out? I don't Men know, Black? man. I, I used to watch it, like... The first pure, movie. I used to watch it sporadically on Saturday mornings when I was eating my cereal. <laughs> I, I, I don't really remember it. I watched it around the same time I was watching like the Back to the Future cartoon and you know Muppet Babies and some of those. Yeah, but, um, Muppet Babies was making it safe for you when, when you, you know, know what's kind of weird <laughs> that you were there. Just Wilco. close your eyes and, and make believe, believe you can be anywhere. Muppet, I like adventure. Muppet. I like romance. I love great jokes. Animal dance. <laughs> I like my computer. And I like my love. I love great music. And I got a blue nose. Ha! Ah! Nobody I'm remembers the long extended version of that except me. Because whenever I've sung it, people just stare at me like, are you insane? <laughs> Check it out. I'm sure it's on YouTube somewhere. <laughs> all right. So here he finally finds a little button that uh, opens up the guy's face. And as we all know, most little men with mustaches actually have an alien inside their head controlling them. It's very true. I have one right now. <laughs> when did you get that implanted, Will? Uh, it Didn't you have in, to get uh, that to work for the city? It was in Garrus 5, sub-quadrant 3 of the Galactic Empire. Oh, look at this guy. <laughs> Actually, So I remember this guy being CG, but that's that's totally a puppet. It's like a Yoda puppet, man. Yeah, it really is. Nice. Wow, no wonder I remember that CG in this movie looking so good. It usually wasn't CG. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they've got the puppet base, but then they use the CG for like the facial expression. Maybe there's a little mouth. bit. I, 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 I think the facial expressions on them might actually be practical, but it, it could be overdone. I don't know they were that good at it at back at this time, though. But he actually kind of looks like Gollum from Lord of the Rings. Right? Gollum! This my precious is around the cat's neck it is. Hmm. Around... Around. <laughs> He's got like the prettiest eyes. <laughs> it's so pretty. Well, I love it. Honestly, why, it's why a... does an alien have nipples? <laughs> <laughs> why do you have nipples? You don't use them for anything. Because I'm an alien, damn it. So you attach car batteries to him, and well, no, I've said too hey, much. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, sorry. Listen, but Alicia's in the room. Okay, <laughs> we don't want her to know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> what we usually do with car these podcasts. <laughs> so last time you'll talk about Fifty Shades of Grey on this podcast. I told you. Um, so, uh, uh, but but the reason that he has big eyes, honestly, it's a it's a total. He's he's designed that way very much on purpose because it's one of those things where you give a good guy big eyes so that they look trusting and cute and vulnerable and yeah. stuff like that. So, you know, that's how we know he's one of the good aliens. So you'll you'll notice throughout most of this movie, like good aliens have big eyes, bad aliens have wee little eyes, little evil looking eyes, little triangle <laughs> eyes. Oh man! <laughs> and she's neuralized. <laughs> but the thing is, they keep doing it to her, and I love how he keeps like hustling to put on his glasses, like he almost forgets all the time. Uh, there was a there was a time when uh, I was on my mission, you know, doing Mormon missionary stuff. We realized that we pretty much look like the men in black when we wear sunglasses. <laughs> we figured people are going to be afraid when we show up at their door that we're going to neuralize them too or that we're looking for an alien or something. <laughs> True story. Be like, we're not looking for aliens, just cobalt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another Battlestar Galactica reference, zing. <laughs> zing. And it ties uh, back to the Mormon belief, religion, right? Yeah, well, the Glenn A. Larson that made up Battlestar Galactica, he was he was a Mormon through and through, and there's all kinds of weird stuff, especially in the original Battlestar series. But mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, I'll talk about that another time. It's kind of fun. Another time. Maybe in, at, a, at a different... Oh, okay, so here come the cleanup crew to <laughs> gather the bodies, essentially. And how would you like to be the... I'd, I'd love to see a movie. You know how there's like... There's a comic book out there from Marvel Comics that's about like the company or the group that cleans up the city after every time it's destroyed. Oh, Agents of Shield. It's not quite Agents of Shield. It's like some other some other group, but 
They should make a movie about that. Just have all these crazy things going on in the background. In fact, it would be a lot like that episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer where there's a huge apocalyptic thing going on in the third season. And that's going on in the background, but really the whole movie, that the whole episode follows Xander and just his weird exploits that night and the weird things that he does and the people he saves, but has absolutely nothing to do with like the big apocalypse battle. And and like you kind of see like snippets of it or hear snippets of it, and then at the very end of the battle, they, at the very end of the episode, everyone's just like, "Man, you really saved my ass back there!" Like, thanks. Yeah, <laughs> I couldn't have saved the world if it hadn't been for you guys. And, like, you miss this whole thing and just kind of saw the periphery of right. of what was going on. But I think that would be a genius way to do a movie. Absolutely. Wow, look how high-tech his flat-screen computer monitor is. <laughs> <laughs> I love these old movies. MS-DOS, run. Technology. Command, run. <laughs> He's a Command, slow typer. Dash, enter. Yeah, uh, and like, here comes his Google Earth. Yeah, yeah, nowadays we actually have stuff like this. You don't even need to have all the satellite stuff. Well, I guess we can't actually focus in on someone in real time, right? Are you kidding me? All you gotta do is find their Facebook, find out where they live, find <laughs> out the recent places they've been to, track the surrounding area, triangulate where they've been, and then you just go and stand on their porch and watch through their window as they have dinner. <laughs> kind of scared how well you know how to do that. <laughs> you kids and your smartphones, you can figure out how to do anything. I don't even know how to use the thing as a phone. I can barely send a text message. <laughs> I don't even know how to hold this thing. Do I use my fingers do i put it in the palm of my hand no Am no seriously put it on my lap? all right so, so, so when my dad first got a smartphone he's talking to one of his friends and his friend tells him you know what my kids told me about using the smartphone he says only old weird people do it with their fingers you have to learn how to use your thumbs for everything on it and I realize it's actually really true <laughs> yeah like you tell like all these older people use their fingers and they jab at it like you know some kind of disgusting wound or something and they're not sure what it's gonna do but like you know like kids uh, they just sit there you know their thumbs go a flail in so fast you think they have more than two of them i'll tell you what mallory makes fun of me all the time because if i don't if i'm like in the winter if i don't have clothes that have like touch screen capabilities and all that yeah. craziness you know that you must need in the winter oh i'll just sit my there. laptop that's sitting right here that we're recording this on i i you try to use it as a touch screen all the time because i forget but yeah. anyway uh, i will sit there and i'll just like use my nose so i'll just be like this really? and like try to swipe things and like push things with my nose i never thought about that that's actually <laughs> i'm like wow Turn on my podcast, hit play, and I'm just like, it looks like I'm just like smashing my fa you phone are, into my face. You are smarter than you are. <laughs> and by the way, I know Mallory makes fun of you, but honestly, I do it too. I just never do it to your face. Oh, that's fine. I figure if you can't. <laughs> I wait until I'm behind your back to give you a good. If you can't accept ribbing. a little fun in your life, then uh, <laughs> you can take it and just, just cram it right up your nostril. Like, just cram it. <laughs> just tell me to cram it. No, no you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> Those that cannot accept it can cram it. <laughs> this is cool where you see all the spaceships are leaving and stuff like that. And uh, I, I do love the big battle cruiser that comes in a little later and threatens to blow up the planet. Because it, it, it reminds me of a big old Star Destroyer. Uh huh. It makes me think maybe this guy was actually part of the Galactic Senate or the Empire or something. <laughs> Hello, Zed. I could be Agent M. That was actually in the sequel. That's, that's part of what I saw with the yeah. the other day. Yeah, see, it looks it looks like a big serrated Star Destroyer. It really does. <laughs> it's really cool looking, though. Bum, 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 bum. No, it's more like Spaceballs. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Three minutes into the movie, it's still going. <laughs> yeah. We break for nobody. Oh, have you heard the recent uh, Star Wars news? Which one? As of today? About how uh, Harrison Ford crashed a plane. Oh yeah, in Tucson. Is he dead? No, he's alive. Okay, good. They say he's seriously injured, but oh my gosh, when you when you're flying a plane that was created in World War One, <laughs> in this modern age. Okay, he's fi <laughs> we finally have Harrison Ford making Star Wars movies again, and he's been injured twice. Like, isn't there like a nice padded, safe, secure place they can? You know what's funny though, just until they finish filming, you know. I, I don't know if he's going to survive past this new movie or whatever. <laughs> right. like, there's guesses out there since, you know, back back way back when he always wanted his character to die and stuff. But, it, like, so a lot of people have kind of speculated. But anyway, like, I mean, you know, whether he makes it past this movie or not or whatever, just keep him around in case they have to do pickups or something like that. Like, quit letting him go fly things and <laughs> trip over closing doors and stuff no, like that. No, it's funny because the two times he's been injured in this, one was the Millennium Falcon like, landing on his foot. Oh, yeah. The second one was the Earth equivalent of the Millennium Falcon because it's old 
busted, oh, yeah. and outdated. A bucket of bolts. Landing right. in a freaking golf course. <laughs> <laughs> so oh my gosh. Like, Harrison Ford, you and your cute little earrings. Does he have earrings right now? I think he's got earrings in his ears again. Oh, Tiny boy. little loops, and one of them's a stud. <laughs> when did he turn into a crazy person? Studs wear studs. I mean, I still, you know, love and appreciate all the work he's done and all the great memories and joy he's given me, you know, and the roles he's played, but holy crap, dude, what a... <laughs> What a quackpot. I liked him on uh, Bruno. Ha! I'm Bruno! Uh, Sacha Baron Cohen. Yeah, I, well, I've never seen Bruno. Like, I know who it is. It's I pretty vile. It, but it's like, we will have an exclusive interview with Hattie Sonthorn! Did he actually show up? He did. And oh, the, really. the interview was uh, Bruno standing outside of his hotel. Like, all right, here's Hattie Ford. Fuck. Fudge off, and he just like pushes right through. <laughs> wow! <laughs> and, and it's just like that tiny clip, and that was the interview. And, and it was still greater than his role in Cowboys and Aliens. Oh, I'm so just... <laughs> much better! Oh man, Cowboys and Aliens is a fine movie. My dad loves that movie. He bought it on Blu-ray. It's... I'm like, Dad, nobody bought this on Blu-ray. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they it actually survived to be made onto Blu-ray. <laughs> I guess. Oh, like... oh, here's where you get to see the, how how powerful the noisy cricket actually is. <laughs> His tiny little gun. And his big old booty caught in the freaking glass. Yeah, yeah, the glass windshield. As opposed to the plastic windshield. I don't even know why I said glass windshield. <laughs> don't make fun of me. Don't give me that look, Alicia. It could have been plexiglass, or maybe it was a Nick Fury. You don't know. It's New York. It's got all kinds of weird, crazy things. Stop laughing at me. <laughs> well, you know, those type of ones are made out of what? Sugar? Like, uh, oh, yeah, like for sugar glass? Yeah, I, I remember there was a time my dad was in a play, right? And there's a part where he's supposed to bring in a bottle and it's made of that sugar glass. And so he's supposed to come in and then later they're getting a bar fight and, and some lady grabs that, that bottle. It has to be that bottle because it's specially made, right. right? And she cracks it over this big guy's head to like stop him, right? Well, I, I guess there was a couple of times where he came in and he set the bottle down too hard so it broke and he just, everyone looks at him and goes, well, I guess that was so good, I'll go out and get another. <laughs> and so he had to come back in with a different bottle and they just kind of had to stall and improvise for a minute and then there was one time where the lady just couldn't find the bottle in the middle of the barroom brawl so she grabbed this big metal pan and smacked the guy in the head with that and boy, I, he looked surprised I mean it's supposed to knock him out but I bet he, he was just shocked enough that it, you know it didn't take much acting anyway yeah there's the serrated star destroyer again MI8 kind of looks like my snow scraper <laughs> It's like, I have one of those in my back seat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's many people on the East Coast right now who are very familiar with snow scrapers. Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, the, oh, man, it's the principal job. from uh, Glee. Is it really? Iqbal Thebda uh-huh. is his name. That's I-Q-B-A-L-T-H-E-B-B-A. cool. I-Q-B-A-L-T-H-E-B-B-A. Glad to know he went on to bigger and better things than being a postcard salesman with fly swatters. <laughs> Maybe it's him. It really looks like him. Kind of like how that other guy looked like. Chris on Gilmore Girls. <laughs> From the side view, it looked exactly like him. And I don't know what that's all about. Dude with a button-up t-shirt <laughs> on the side when they were cool. Hey, I still have some of those. <laughs> I saw them. I never wear them. them <laughs> so I'm smarter than that. But uh, I used to have several Chinese, like all the ones like with the markings on them and the dragons and the kanjis and yeah but see you can get away with that you were one of the cool kids before harley and i got you in the comic books and crap i actually yeah. wasn't that cool i just talked a lot go figure <laughs> which is perfect for a podcast that's, that's why i chose you out of everyone else to come do this agent f one of my favorites <laughs> oh yeah the Break the dog a little dog yeah that's great this this is i i, I wonder if this predates babe when they had animals and they'd sit there and move ah, and animate their, their mouths and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> he just starts shaking him, the poor dog. <laughs> because you know they had to shake like a real dog. Maybe it was a puppet. <laughs> I hope it was a puppet. That you, poor you thing. I think so, yeah. Poor little guy. But it's funny that special effects look kind of bad by today's standards, but it's still pretty passable. Oh, yeah. Somehow you can get away with it a lot better with a human doing this kind of thing than you could, like... I, sorry, with an animal and this kind of thing than you could with a human. Like in Forrest Gump, if you've seen that recently, how weird it looks with the mouth flaps they gave JFK and any of the presidents. Yeah. Like, it's, it's pretty goofy looking. And then it's, like, all grainy in the TV and everything, and you see, like, Tom Hanks pop around the corner, and it's all nice Slightly and Slightly less grainy, yeah. It's, like, not quite... <laughs> Somehow it doesn't quite do it. Oh, man. Especially with high-def stuff. Like, that's the thing with the old special effects. Like, you get away with it on those old tube televisions, but now with Blu-ray and HD and everything like that, like, 
No, we were watching the Ten Commandments a couple of weeks ago with Charlton Heston. Yeah. That's like 1956, right? And anytime they were on a blue screen, you bet they had the biggest, bluest outline all over, <laughs> man. You couldn't notice it better, on, you know. And you got like this really nice LG, you know, top of the line television that we were watching it on, and it really did nothing to help the special effect. <laughs> Mallory hates watching a lot of things in high def because she's like, ew. I, I actually can see, like every pore on their face. This is disgusting. Yeah, like, I, I actually do kind of miss just kind of the old, the, the old griminess, and like you know, on a VCR where you'd have that weird tracking problem come up, or like yeah. you got to a part on the tape that it was like kind of crinkled at one point, so it like kind of jumped a little that bit. Awful noise, that the little <laughs> crackle. Yeah, <laughs> as it's going to pass that. Part. I miss uh. that. I, I think that's why I liked in 2007, Robert Rodriguez and Tarantino came out with that grindhouse stuff. Uh -huh. And I love watching those movies just because they look so much like those old school things where the the film would kind of go bad in some places. Uh -huh. and that's why I'm really liking this Fresh Off the Boat TV show that they have on ABC. I haven't seen it. Oh, it's so good. So it's set in the 90s. I always feel bad. In the middle of our podcast, we'll talk about some cool new show that's out. And I always have to respond, I've never seen it. <laughs> that's all right. I'll go it was, off on my tangent. A long time ago. <laughs> well, it follows an Asian family that uh, moved from Washington, D.C., from Chinatown in Washington, D.C., to Florida, so that the dad can open up a steakhouse that's Western themed. He calls it Cattleman's Ranch. I can't imagine this is racist in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> it's so funny. It's yeah. uh, it's centered around the child. The child's like the star of it. Yeah. But the mom, she steals the show. Like after like the first two episodes, she is so freaking funny. <laughs> and uh, they're talking about Biggie. They talked about Shaq Fu. Oh yeah, the old video game. Uh huh. Oh they're my like, gosh. Yeah, I guess he can manipulate wind. <laughs> Just tell me, it wasn't good, was it? No. <laughs> Sounds fun. <laughs> it's Sounds like really good. Look how uh, look how young David Cross looks now in this. Yep. Yeah. And actually has a lot more hair than I've probably ever seen him. Nice freaking earring. <laughs> <laughs> He's really kind of nineties, almost like kind of grunge scene, you know, pseudo grunge scene. Oh yeah. <laughs> Love you, David Cross. You really have to watch like the increasingly <laughs> poor decisions of Todd Margaret. I've heard of that. Like I heard a great podcast oh, where he was talking gosh. about it. It's so embarrassing, like his character. Uh -huh. It's so embarrassing and everything. Yeah, that you're literally like cringing with embarrassment for him the entire time. You're wanting to laugh and you're <laughs> laughing, but at the same time you're like, oh my gosh, why is he doing this? I'm sorry, everybody. I know he's on the te television screen, but I'm sorry for his actions right now. You just cringe <laughs> the whole time you're watching it. It's so funny though. I love how these guys find themselves back at the morgue. <laughs> and like I say, like you get the idea that this has happened, that this happens all the time, and that Jay always, you know, Kay has always had to come here. And you know, <laughs> it's a good thing they did. God, look at that piece he's got on him. Yeah, that revolver. Holy crap! Dirty Harry ain't got nothing on him. <laughs> I hope the men in black feel lucky. You know what's funny? We just made a <coughs> reference to John Wayne. John Wayne. John Wayne. And then we Terrible also name for a cowboy. made a King Kong reference. Ali Bumbae. Will. I hate, Ali Bumbae. <laughs> I hate to say it, but I think we're nerds. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking, uh, King Kong ain't got on me <laughs> when he played Ollie <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a bad man uh, I think that's when he actually finally bulked up and now he's like super buff in all his movies yeah um, there's a great scene where she's, she's trying to tell him that there's someone like holding her hostage and he just thinks she's hitting on him <laughs> I'd really like to go really with you now he's like oh baby baby slow down <laughs> again I apologize for my Will Smith impression <laughs> alright 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 Maggie McConaughey, I'm just, you know, doing my thing, acting my show. <laughs> my, I'm on Interstellar where I cry a lot. I got a lot of chances to, uh, you know, get waterworks going. My name is h and I drive a Lincoln for my MLB yeah. car. Man, I'm man, he left it running. That's how I am, man, but I got my <laughs> surfboard on top just in case I want to go catch some waves. <laughs> Did you watch uh, the 40th anniversary of SNL? No. I would highly re recommend that. I'm getting to it. Yeah. I still got <laughs> Gilmore Girls to watch, I told you. Alex... <laughs> I'm really sorry for the way that I've been acting. This is Sean Connery talking to Alex Trebek. Oh, on the May I please pick the next category? I'll take Munch that shot with Feb Trump. <laughs> this one was uh, Let It Snow. He's like, I'll take La Tits Now for 500. Oh 
I'm like, <laughs> we're talking about, I'll take the rapish for 500. I'm like, that's therapist. <laughs> yeah. They need to jokes. ask you about the penis mightier. <laughs> uh, who reads was another one. He's like, I'll take whore ads for 200. Whore. <laughs> <laughs> and then Jim Carrey comes on as Matthew McConaughey. Oh, and, really nice. Uh, Burt Reynolds. Done by Norm Macdonald comes on. <laughs> yeah, and Turd Ferguson. That's not my name. Turd Ferguson. Turd Ferguson. Would you like to choose the next category? <laughs> <laughs> he actually makes him call him Turd Ferguson. I love it. There it's was a so uh, funny my my uh, my buddy. He, one of his nephews. He would always call him Turd Ferguson because <laughs> he was such a twit. But, oh, look <laughs> at him jump, man! He's got like Marvel versus Capcom jumping there. Yeah. Um. This is probably, I guess this is the end of Act 2, beginning of Act 3 for this movie. Yeah. Because, you know, like, the, the stakes are there, the lines are drawn, we know who the bad guy is, and now we just have to stop him. At so, this you know. point is about where I usually tune out. It's all good and everything, but once they get to, like, the spaceships and they start actually yeah, the handling business. It's getting almost too serious in some ways. But yeah. I, 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 I don't know if, if you guys know. Yeah, that was really creepy. Yeah. <laughs> so wonder how they did that shot. But I, do you guys know, like, so I guess they, they had a World's Fair there, and that's where they're headed to, is where those flying saucers are. Is that real? Does anybody know if those are there? Or does I the think they IMDb are. IMDb Trivia say anything about it? Or I didn't see. I wasn't really looking, though. Uh, oh, she put on my I love how they know that, that he got into a cab because the beads are on the ground. <laughs> so <Somebody laughs> they threw racist. the beads out and everything. It totally is, but is it still racist if it's Will Smith saying it? I think he can yeah. get away with just about any of that. Uh, typical Wait, New is that York. racist, what I just said? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean it. I, what is racist? Please don't kill me. Everybody's what just a little bit racist. <laughs> have you ever seen that show or heard that play? Mm -mm. Where they, they have the Muppets. It's like a really adult Sesame Street. The internet is really, really great for porn. <laughs> <laughs> it goes real fast so I don't have to wait. For porn! <laughs> Grab your dick and double click for porn. For oh, porn. What uh, brought up the whole uh, off this fresh off the boat thing is yeah. when we were talking about uh, waiting for certain things to happen back in the day because of technology. Oh, yeah. He's like, I brought my internet computer <laughs> <laughs> over. And you just hear, he just hits the connect button and you just hear, <laughs> oh my gosh. Like, I hate that ba -dum, sound. Ba -dum, ba -dum. <laughs> Will, get off the phone. Get off the internet. Sorry, Dad. Don't That's what I heard the all phone. the time. <laughs> That's funny. Sorry, I'm illegally downloading music like usual. Oh, seriously, I, I, would, I would look up uh, like Macross and Dragon Ball Z stuff and everything like that, you know. And I like, you, you could let a page load up and go grab yourself a sandwich and come back. And by the time you were back, it would have just finished putting the finishing touches on the resolution. <laughs> See, I mine guess, how it was, was man. totally different. Since I lived out in the boonies in Corinne. Oh, yeah. It would be I like, was just through there today myself, actually. I would hit download a song. It's on the way you to know, the toilet paper One factory. song. One song is nothing these days. It's like 20 seconds and the song is downloaded. Right. Back then, it used to take me about an hour and a half to download a song. <laughs> My my friend it no, was horrible. It, and that's just one song, right? Yeah. You know, my 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 one friend, he's like my computer buddy, and he's like way into every like he knows everything. He's been working in the field now forever. But like way back, even before he got DSL, you know, like right when that came out, and he he got the first high speed internet connection I ever got the chance to play on. Um, he was getting from a guy in Canada the the unreleased Evangelion movies that came out at the time. Now, the way he had to watch it was he had to download it in these packets where he'd be able to watch about 10 minutes at a time. It would take him a couple of days for each packet. So he'd watch 10 minutes and then something would happen. He'd be like, no, that can't be the ending. <laughs> what a terrible way to watch a movie. Right, because there's Especially already one that you've been waiting to see forever, you know. <laughs> it's like, oh, here's one cliffhanger, but now you're getting 10 more because you're downloading each packet individually. So yeah, it's like... No, seriously. <laughs> cliffhanger, 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 cliffhanger. Oh, here we get to see their their cool car and what Finally. it can actually do this is a cool sequence what I, song does he play it's Elvis Presley right it, it is an Elvis song but uh, here's the Lincoln Tunnel yeah it'll tell us what I've song I've been in that tunnel hey that um, looks pretty good yeah and then they hit this traffic right here now this special effect if I remember right looks really bad CG yeah but you know like Still looks better than anything in Michael Bay. Optimus Prime. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's a transformer. <laughs> and you know what's Looks funny like about hearse. this car? I'll tell you about it. 
um, when he says, oh, I got to drive a Ford POS. I didn't realize what POS stood for. I thought it was literally a Ford car that came out way back when or something. <laughs> it wasn't until like way later that somebody told me what POS meant. If we're th- talking about flashbacks to VHS, this is a flashback to even before that. Oh, with it's the 8-track? track <laughs> With all the technology in that car. Oh, there's their the flux A-track. capacitor. Can it go back in time? Okay, huh? Oh, I thought you were pointing out Will Smith's sexy ankle. No, I was just talking about his Oh, package. for Silas. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a cool car. Man, I can't tell you how many times I wish I had something that could do this. <laughs> right? <laughs> It's kind of hard to believe there's only like 10 minutes left of this movie. Like, I remember watching this as a kid, and I'm like, it's like two and a half hours long, three hours. This movie's awesome. Dang, we're only getting to about an hour and 20 minutes on time right here. Yeah. uh, I told you it was less than two hours, honey. (laughs) Yeah. But, um, this one's actually. I love love how he actually still pays the toll. (laughs) Makes it right in there. What a great citizen. Good job. It wasn't until I went to the East Coast and, like, we were driving on all the toll roads that I realized why here they call it a freeway. Because yeah. there's no tolls. <laughs> that makes sense. I've never Thank actually goodness for freeways. that either. I'll pay a little bit more gas tax just so I don't ever have to go through the trouble of having change for a toll. <laughs> it was expensive in... Uh, Wisconsin? Wisconsin because yeah. they came and picked us up in Chicago because of our flight delay. Right. And the toll roads all the way back to Wisconsin, probably because the Bears hate the Packers, is like... Two dollars here, four dollars here, yeah, five fifty yeah. here. It's like, no, that's seriously, it is. When I was returning my rental car to the airport, I almost didn't have a change for it. Like I remember having to dig through my backpack trying to find it just so I could get in through the toll, right? Without like getting you know caught or something. It's wild. Look how cool these guns are. He's like, that's what I'm talking my, about. <laughs> when I was a kid, I'd hang out with my friend David Bisson. If you're listening to this, give me a call sometime. Let me know what happened to you, David. But um, we missed you, David. This gu- th- that gun that the the Jay is holding right there. Yeah, he, he had like a Return of the Jedi gun that was all big like that. It was a big gray toy, you know? But it was actually, I think it was some kind of carrying case because you could actually undo a clip and pop it halfway open like it would split down the middle. Huh. You could pop it open. I, I think you could carry figures in it, kind of like Chewie's bandolier, ah, that, that yeah. Darth Vader head or something. But yeah, it was specifically said Return of the Jedi on it. But when he and I would like play aliens, like we were pretending to fight them or whatever, like I, that was always the gun, the toy that I would have for my gun. <laughs> it looked just like the one that Jay has in this movie. Man, I feel bad. Like it, it makes me think of all the sap and all the pine needles poking her right now while she's stuck in that tree. <laughs> right. And I just I hate sticky things. So oh, My hands I, are I so don't sticky. I don't blame um, you one bit. I get sap on me. That's the end of it. Like right. no. <laughs> Man, can you imagine the neuralizer they're gonna have to use on that baseball stadium? I mean, I know in the second one they have that one on the Statue of Liberty. Yeah, still, <laughs> that would have been awesome. On the head and knocks him out. That's a great gag. <laughs> he's neuralized himself. Right. I'm going to neuralize my damn self. There was a weird thing <laughs> in the 90s, especially the late 90s, where any cool technology or superhero kind of utility had to be shiny like that. Shiny and I, it had to have some sort of goo and a light. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, absolutely. In, in Mystery Men, they all had really shiny armor, especially again, Batman and Robin, Batman Forever, like all these weird uh-huh. late 90s things. That somehow was cool at the time. I don't understand how, but... <laughs> I love how they just chill there like well I feel like that shot's good. been parodied in like so many movies like even in 300 <laughs> where the guy like throws the spear at the rhino or whatever and it like stops right at his feet yeah but it is great how Jay's looking at Kay like, are, they should are we gonna move like are you okay <laughs> I, I, that's part of why this movie works so well it's just their dynamic you it know? really does it, it's, it makes it really fun I love any okay. This is gonna sound totally bad, but where they like have a duo of characters that are from different backgrounds, like different race or age or anything like that. Yeah, Let's go, them, uh, sure. Shanghai Noon. Yeah. Uh, of course, I'm gonna go back to another Jackie Chan one and do Rush <laughs> Hour. Uh, We're cooking on Jackie Chan. See really. no evil, hear no evil. That was uh, Richard Pryor and oh, uh, Murphy. Uh, no, Richard Pryor and Gene. Oh yeah, sorry. I was thinking of what was the one I was thinking of that has Eddie Murphy and Trading Spaces with Dan Aykroyd. Gene Wilder. Gene Wilder was the one, yeah, yeah with uh... no, no. Gene Wilder, like they, they they can see in each other's eyes or something or crap. Never mind. I, I, <laughs> someone out there knows what I'm talking about. Who no evil? Uh, speak no evil was Gene Wilder and Richard Pryor, where one was oh, deaf yes. and one was oh, blind. Yeah, that is what I'm thinking of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, what was the one you? Oh, you were talking the Trading Places with yeah. uh, Eddie Murphy and uh, Dan Aykroyd. That one, I absolutely love and they don't interact until the very end but it's like the dynamic of the characters and the things that they go through just makes a movie that much better yeah yeah for sure oh man 
Yeah, it does help. It's nice to have that Ugh, kind of thing. wrinkles. It's it's and it's hard to find that kind of chemistry too. I think just with any actors, you know. But I, I think when you have that kind of diversity, that like automatically helps. Uh huh. Which should be a lesson for us all. Dang it. <laughs> be more diverse. It really is. A Love night. one another. This guy really is a cool, threatening last villain. Yeah. And, like, I know they're using some practical effects here, but still, like the you know, the CGI is is looking really good for Eat a creature me. like this. Eat me. Yeah, it's creepy. Look how big he is. Like he's, he's huge. He's, he's almost now you as big and at least as scary as like the Queen Alien on Aliens. And now we know why he walked around so crazy because fitting something Trying, about yeah. five times as big as us into our bodies. <laughs> Wait, he's a cool alien and he's both threatening and funny and like, you know. He's lucky that he didn't chew though. I think he's a lot more. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> well, you know, most bugs eat like a duck, I guess. Especially That's what I look alien. like when I wake up and I'm trying to like get through my blankets and the sheets and everything. I'm just like, ah, where does this end and begin? <laughs> well, I, I told you, if you just get rid of that giant cockroach in your house, you wouldn't have to worry about it. I know, but he likes to cuddle and he's nice and warm. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he keeps me safe and sound. <laughs> and that his goo on his body is so good for your skin. <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, ew, yeah. That fire's fake. Coming out of his mouth. <laughs> Do you think so? I don't know. <laughs> it was just kind of funny because okay, of the thinking. way that it looked. <laughs> Maybe he saw something weird in it. But, ooh, ooh, don't. Ah, he's going to stab him, wasn't he? Yeah. He's going to pull gonna... a Samwise Gamgee and stab <laughs> old Sheila up here. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I don't know why. He's got a big butt. This, I think out of all the villains, this one was the coolest. I, I think, uh,. Jermaine from Flight of the Concords is really cool in Men in Black 3. I don't really remember him very well. Uh -huh. I remember not liking the one tendril lady on the second one so much. Like, and Selena this or whatever? Was yeah, I just remember she'd like shoot the tentacles out of her pinky and stuff. And I, Johnny I, Knoxville was a good addition. He was, <laughs> really good. He, he was about as obnoxious as Johnny Knoxville ever is, which yep. is kind of fun. <laughs> I'm not going to say. But, you know, I don't know. Was, maybe maybe that obnoxious. villain was just a little too hentai for me. Yeah. <laughs> Get a little bit of tentacle. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Oh, thank goodness for the cockroaches in the garbage. Ah, oh, ah, ah! Yeah, it still makes me. Uh, you know what makes me cringe? It's not the freaking bugs or anything. It's the goo that comes out from it, like all that waste that accumulates yeah. at the bottom of a garbage can. Oh, no, and again, it stinks. And another thing, when I lived, you in taste Florida, it. And it tastes awful. We, I mean, even we had a couple of cockroaches every now and then, but we we set traps for them. We had bug spray. You know, we tried to take care of the problem before it was a problem. I remember sitting on the can one time and I saw a cockroach going, so I took the garbage can and I set it on top of it and I kind of moved it, tried to squish it around, put it there. Anyway, I never bothered to look underneath it because I was afraid it would get away. I'm like, I'll let it starve for like two weeks. Well, like two weeks later, I open it up, and the, the cockroach just looks around and keeps on going, and I'm like, holy crap, it's still alive? They literally are. You cannot kill those things. Yeah, two things that are going to be alive after a nuclear holocaust, cockroaches. And Twinkies. Keith Richards. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My family Keith out. Richards, uh, I smoked an atomic bomb one time, and <laughs> it left me so high that I thought I had nuclear radiation poisoning. <laughs> Jack Sparrow's dad. Yep. <laughs> I definitely knew that. Like, the moment I saw him, I'm like, that nose is fake. You're Keith Richards. <laughs> totally Keith Richards. Savvy, mate. Um, Savvy? Yeah, again, here's another scene where they're all in a bunch of goo and KY jelly. It just makes me feel bad yeah. about their filming. On the other hand... And they're all warm. Well, I, I guess the ones I really feel bad about are the bit players that probably got paid, like, you know, maybe $5,000 to be there for the day to you know have a few lines in the movie and get their sag cred or whatever right but like you know guys like this that are getting paid you know 10 million dollars a piece uh look how advanced the cell phone is there <laughs> um, you know when they're getting paid 10 million dollars a piece i feel just a little less bad about them having to spend the day covering in goo yeah i'm like oh you should you should see what i'd cover myself in for 10 million dollars <laughs> 50 million dollars who the hell you think you got chelsea clinton <laughs> Speaking of Jackie Chan movies, right? <laughs> Never touch a black man's radio. <laughs> uh, Chris every, Tucker. <laughs> Chris Tucker. Everybody's uh, favorite quote of, from that movie that I do is, "Stay right here. I'll be right back." <laughs> you know the Duke, John Wayne. You know, stay here with the Duke. I'll be right back. Tiny food here. No I, soul food. <laughs> I was gonna say one of my my. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't no punk bitch. You're the punk bitch. I'm a punk bitch. You punk bitch. 
<laughs> anyway, Men in Black. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, back to Men in Black. We've been talking Sorry. about like every other movie out there that we're watching today. <laughs> Oh well, like I say, this movie speaks it. for itself. Like I've loved this movie since what I was a kid. What can we say about this movie? It's I mean, it's super awesome. It really is. I, man, Props I, up. I love the costume up design on this movie. Yeah, it's pretty original. <laughs> just kidding. Because they all just it's wear like, suits. Get it? I wonder who does their styling because everybody just looks so diverse in their oh, different outfits. Like I, I, I kid you not. So when I first started working at Tangri <laughs> and I was driving buses. Pretty much everyone else there were old people getting ready to retire, right? And this line here, uh, Jim, you know, the head bus driver guy, uh-huh. he would tell me this line all the time when he'd be showing me some duties and stuff like that. And he's like, I'm, <laughs> he's I'm, not training, I'm not training a partner, I'm training a replacement. And it always was cool that he was quoting a line from this movie, you know? All right. And and we'd, we'd laugh about it, but at the same time, like, it'll... It, Thinking about it, it makes me feel really bad for how much I quit that place. <laughs> Why? He <laughs> wasn't training wait, anybody. Wait, he was he, just going to ride it out and ha- do absolutely nothing until he could finally retire. He did. He really screwed over like one of our other friends that worked there, and it really sucks. But Props uh, to Harley. Yo, yo. Yeah, shout out to our friend Harley at Dr. Volt's Comic Connection, 2043 East, 3300 South. Did I get that right? Salt Lake City, Utah. <laughs> even what I, did? I did. I got that you did. right. You Woo! got it totally right. He Dr. didn't even Bolts, have. He didn't even need our Dave. card this time. <laughs> got that stuff memorized, yo. Great. Now I'm starting to talk like Will Smith all the time. I'm gonna get beat up. Turn into Pendy's. I think I'm turning into Pendy's. How come Will Smith doesn't do the mustache so. anymore? Yo, what's up, Uncle Phil? Maybe it's too fresh, Brent. So yeah, know. since Uncle Phil died, he's Carlton. like, uh... oh hell no. Uncle, Uncle Phil didn't die, did he? Yeah. What? He died like a couple months ago. The guy that did the voice of Shredder on Ninja Turtles? Yep. Crang. Crap, I didn't know that. What's his name? Uh, oh, wow. I feel bad. I can I never even remember his name. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty crazy. Oh, yeah, all the things here from their adventure. The UFO made me miss a home run. <laughs> the government has a thing that can drive on walls. He awakens after a 35-year coma. You know, it almost makes you feel bad that there were sequels because it actually kind of ruins his happy ending that he gets here. <laughs> right. Oh, you can tell time has passed because now he has a soul patch to match his mustache. And now he looks like Neo, only for the men in black. That's true, yeah, because he changes his outfit here. He's got this outfit, man. Zed must this have, is him, like... Zed must have gotten after him about going against regulation <laughs> and made him put on the other suit again. I something. can't believe I turned down the Matrix. I at least got to try and dress like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, considering this movie came Worst out two years before the Matrix. outfit ever. <laughs> ah, it's, it's styling. But, you know, again, you have to be Will Smith to pull off half the outfits he wears in this movie. Right. <laughs> Actually, every outfit on this, except for the... Except for the suit. And even when it comes to the suit, the difference between us and him in that suit, he makes this look good. He makes this look good. <laughs> anyway, that's it. It's, I love the, the great endings on these movies, the big pullouts and reveals that, you know. Pulling out doesn't we're work. All just, <laughs> we're all just, you know, inside, uh, you know, playing playing some game inside a marble, you yep. know, inside some other giant alien's hand. And even then, who knows what their lives are. Right. Again, big CG ending here. Man, all the CG characters and everything in this, though, they totally predate Episode 1 and even Jar Jar Binks and Gollum yep. and all those guys. So let's give a shout-out to the MIB. Ooh. What a cool movie here it was. Here come the men in black. Galaxy Defenders. Look the you remember. Uh-oh, uh-oh. That music video used to play on a channel called The Box way back when. Uh-huh. And it was, like, super cool because it had that CG alien from the beginning that they blow up. And he was dancing with Will Smith and everybody else. <laughs> That's great. I think Will Smith did a rap for this. He did a rap for Wild Wild West, of course, right after this. Uh-huh. They did a rap for Men in Black 2. But then yep. he Black Suit's coming. He obviously didn't care to do one for Men in Black no, 3. No, The Black Suit's coming. <laughs> he may have, actually. Well, I've already plugged I don't know. <laughs> Dr. Volt's Comic Connection. Anything you want to talk about? Uh, I want to plug uh, First Compassionate Eatery. Uh, thir- uh Somewhere uh, on 13 145 South. East, 1300 <laughs> South, Suite 201 in the heart of Salt Lake City, Utah. Go ahead and check them out. They're a great, compassionate vegan eatery establishment. And uh, Lee George Cage. Cage? Cage. Cage. Is, is he the, the brother uh, of Johnny Cage? Johnny Cage's oh my brother, Nicholas Cage's cousin. Uh, <laughs> Lee George Cage, probably one of the top geeks ever, except for Egg Fu. He like won the entire geek sh- or the pub quiz by himself. Dang. Um, that's why uh, I don't go to that because it's right. <laughs> no, just go check them out. It's a uh, great, delicious, full-bodied food, and it's absolutely phenomenal. Uh, 
check your mental health. As I say in every podcast, uh, if you see somebody suffering from depression, it's not something to make fun of them about. It's something that you need to talk with them about and get those out of the way so that everybody can live a serene life in any way possible. Yeah. Uh, uh, I wanted to plug MatthewArt.com because that's Matthew my brother's website. Com. He made our logo that you've probably been staring at if you're watching this on our YouTube channel. And uh, he's an amazing artist, a gifted guy, talented, wonderful. Uh, check out his children's pretty books. Cute too. His art. His wife would certainly say so. <laughs> I'll let him know that you say that too. Ooh. But uh, <laughs> oh my. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's. Uh, please check out MatthewArt.com and give him a shout out. Um, but. Uh, uh, oh, I, my, my sister has a really cool blog she does a lot of cool photography and I always want to plug that and I'm embarrassed to say I can't think of it off the top of my head but next podcast though her name's Katie Armstrong maybe a Google search will pull it up definitely if you're looking for a magician for your local party or balloon expert uh, check out Lefty Caress C-A-R-E-S-S Lefty Caress uh, he's a great magician local to Utah Salt Lake City downtown and my cousin Celeste McCulley, she's a balloon expert and make, can make you whatever you want. I had a balloon lady make me at the Starship Enterprise once. It was like one of the coolest things ever. I was really sad when it deflated. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> Anything you want to plug, Dishers? Do you want to say bye? <laughs> bye. <laughs> Did you have a good time? Yes. You should join us more often. <laughs> join us in celebrating movies. Take us out, Mike. All right, this has been Will and Mike Explain the Movieverse, and join us next time when we'll be watching, oh, probably something around two hours long and maybe made before the year 2000. So May you all have a great night. And may the Schwartz be may with you. May the Schwartz you. be with you. Adorable. Oh,